This is Harvard on the Map, presented by the Harvard Graduate School of Design, covering innovative ideas and thought leaders in digital cartography, earth observation, and all things geospatial, with your host, Jennifer Horowitz. This is Harvard on the Map. Um, I'm here with John Nelson, who um, has long been an inspiration of mine. He is what I would refer to as honestly the Beyonce of GIS and mapping in my in my personal context. I uh, I have you ever been on the Esri website or tried to just look at a really cool you know iteration of a of a mapping concept you're trying to use? I guarantee John Nelson's blog will come up. Um, and so I, uh, I, I thought I'd use this broadcast as an amazing opportunity to talk to him. And uh, here, yeah, here he is. Uh, thanks Thank for you, coming on the program. Gosh. Okay. Well, I hope you've got a few minutes for me to recover from being uh, likened to Beyonce in any way. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. uh, yes. Achievement unlocked. Yes. yes exactly. Exactly. Yes. Um, well, it's an honor to be invited, first yeah. of all. Thanks. And, um, I love talking about map stuff. So fire yeah. away, maps this, right. map that. Okay, so uh, I guess you know I'd love to sort of hear about your journey, how you you, you got started with GIS, and and um, and yeah, how your your educational background led you to your position today uh, at Esri. Sure. Well, it's a a little bit circuitous. I my educational background is in geography. It was a mix of geography and art, actually. So I minored in art, which turns out to have been pretty fortuitous. And the the geography things that I worked on were social sciences, which was actually a, a separate major. Um, but in geography, it was, they called it the techniques back then in the ancient days when I went to Central Michigan University. The techniques, which were cartography, GIS, and remote sensing. And so that was my um, focus. And, you know, of course, it's geography. So you get a bunch of physical geography, and economic geography. So we're all well-rounded geographers who know how to apply the tools instead of just how to push buttons and things like that. But it was a, a great education. And Central Michigan has had and has a really good program in that department, which is fortunate because I grew up in that area. My, my father was a professor hmm. at the university. My sister's there now, which is exciting. Um, and so it was kind of like a second home for me and it just carried on that way. And I was just really um, lucky that I found map making, I suppose, is the, what I would think of as a general way of referring to it instead of the techniques, the geographic techniques. But um, yeah, it was great. I loved it. Hmm. And, and so GIS was just a, a, a course that was part of your geography coursework? Mm -hmm. There was a few, of course, because I specialized in it, and um, it would be a mix of GIS and cartography and that sort of thing. And that was my undergraduate degree. And I, I graduated, and well, I'll tell you, honestly, um, if anybody is a student right now and, and approaching graduation, I'll tell you, I graduated and had zero prospects for employment. And I'll tell you, I needed some employment. Um, I was unemployed for, for many months, and it was a real drag, it was a real a bummer. So um, being on the other side of that, frankly, is nice, but it also gives me, you know, a little bit of empathy and context for people who are um, just at the edge of school. And I'd be talking to other students who were about to graduate back then, and they'd say, oh, I've got this interview lined up, or I've got this job all set, I just have to graduate. And I was so jealous, so jealous of them. But, you know, things work out. Um, I ended up working for a Native American tribe in Massachusetts, the Wampanoag tribe, and it was a great opportunity um, for doing map making. And uh, it was really kind of open-ended in, in what sorts of projects they wanted me to do or you know, let me do, I suppose. And I think that's one of the cool things about um, a technology like geography and GIS and, and map making is that there's a lot of flexibility in what you can create, first of all. But before that, I think there's a lot of flexibility in, in what you decide to approach and how you use your time, because there's so much that you can do. I mean, I don't have to tell you, Jennifer, that I, the opportunities for applying spatial thinking are just myriad. And so it's, it's really exciting to start chiseling away at um, uh, projects that haven't had a location component up to that point. So there's a lot of fun opportunities there. So that was a lot of fun. But I mean, I don't know how, 
how long you want me to go no, into I, my edu- okay my that's, career that's fascinating. path. I, I actually, it's very specific. I actually, right out of college, I also worked for a Native American tribe doing mm. GIS mapping. It's very, mm-hmm. very, very specific niche. Interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Cool. It was it was such an interesting and valuable opportunity. I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, interesting. Yeah. So um, I guess. My my next question, because a lot of your blog posts deal with um, a lot of the the back end and a lot of the, the the coding aspects of GIS, and I think some of the discussion around even just the GIS world is is that you know in order to make yourself you know marketable on the, on the you know in the marketplace of of geospatial technologists, you need to have that extra level I think of of, of coding experience of, of you know um, of coding knowledge. So um, you know as someone who's sort of gotten into it um, a bit. You know, starting with Python and then moving to R and, and JavaScript. You know, where would you say that you know we should focus our attention in terms of you know geospatial technologists, ourselves, GIS, you know, enthusiasts? Where would you focus your your attention in terms of um, yeah, in terms mm-hmm. of knowledge base that you should you should grow? Yeah, well, I'm jealous. I'm jealous that you have those skills because I don't. <laughs> um, I don't do what I did, so I I am incapable of programming. Um, I can edit existing HTML markup maybe, but it'll take me about three seconds before I screw something up and miss a semicolon and it's all toast. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I'm, a, I'm a button pusher, but I think about what I want to do and um, every step I take along the creative process is an intentional step, I would hope. And you know, I don't really rely on the defaults, but I have to admit though, I'm not a programmer. I, I can't code, I don't code, um, but I'm very, fortunate to work with people who do have that specialization. So people who um, can code in in their sleep better than really I could ever dream of being, you know, code efficiency and creativity and compactness of their design. I could never approach that, but I can approach something with an eye for visual design uh, usability. I can wave my hands around. I can make mock-ups. I can Mm -hmm. present um, ideas and requirements to somebody and work with them. Mm-hmm. But I, I do benefit from a specialized economy. So I, I do a lot of user experience design and um, cart- cartography. And those two are so overlapping, really, thematically mm-hmm. in the, co- the topics that are involved. But no, I don't code, but other people do code, thank goodness. And a lot of what I do actually doesn't require code. Mm-hmm. Um, but if, if you're out there and you're um, inclined in that direction, um, I have to say your prospects for work and your creative freedom will be a lot greater than I have, you know, than the experience that I had graduating because I I couldn't program. I remember seeing all the job listings for GIS professionals would say Mm -hmm. a major in GIS or geography or computer science. Every one of them. <laughs> it was so funny when I was, I was thinking, oh man, I, I'm, I'm really missing something. So more power to you if you've got it and if you've got the capabilities to, to uh, increase those skills. But I don't have those skills. Interesting. To we, all, hear we all bring something different. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, one of my favorite things has been going through some of your your archived work, and and uh, and I I wondered, you know, where where would you say your favorite project is? What would you say? Uh, what would you say that that is? Yeah. Oh, golly. Good question. You know, Jennifer, it's, they just kind of flow from one thing to the other. Sure. It's hard for me to pick one out. I mean, I've had some that had kind of a su- surprising emotional effect on me or hmm. things that have um, been important to my like professional career that I didn't necessarily anticipate. Hmm. Um, and, and things that I thought would be pretty big and, and popular that just weren't, people weren't all that interested. So I'm always surprised at what people like and what they just kind of generally ignore, which is fine. Um, I actually use social media a bit to test those waters. Do you, do you want to know my evil secret? Like yes, 30? yes, okay. please. So uh, if I'm working on something, oftentimes I'll just drop a, I'll, I'll take a photograph of my monitor as I'm working on it and I'll mm-hmm. just drop it into Instagram and see what people think. And um, some things I think, boy, this is going to be pretty interesting and new and novel. And, and, you know, it's crickets. Nobody seems to care. Or sometimes they really do like it and it's yeah. visually interesting. And so I think, okay, maybe I'll, I'll follow up on this, which isn't to say that that guides me fully. And I have like full uh, 
ability to just choose whatever I'm working on. But it is a really nice bit of feedback, a sounding board that wouldn't have been available too too long ago in the past. Huh. You know, mm -hmm. your, your, your content is so prolific. You've got the YouTube channel, you've got uh, your, your website, you've got, you know, and, and I mean, what are your work hours? I, I've often wondered this. I sometimes I'm on LinkedIn or I'm on, I'm on one of the platforms that I follow you on. I think, does John Nelson just, he must, he must just never sleep. This, this guy, I, 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 it's amazing. Good. Then my trick is working perfectly. Okay. <laughs> Perfectly. Um, no, I mean, I have really regular hours, which, All and right. I work remotely. I worked remotely before the pandemic, and certainly oh. I'm working remotely now, of course, like, like so many are, and I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. I'm very, you know, blessed and happy about that. Yeah. But um, my working hours are very regular. I don't work a whole lot. You know, I, I'll just do the, not a nine to five. I like to stroll in at 7.30 or 8, and I'm done by five or so, yeah. and I go play with the kids. And, you know, run around with a dog and ride the bikes and chase chickens around and find the eggs and that kind of thing. Um, we've got a pretty good balance going here and it's a really good life. Um, Are you in the Redlands but, right now? I should have asked. No, I live and work in Michigan. So, oh. uh, yeah, it's just west of Lansing, oh, right. Michigan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little town called Grand Ledge, a little slice of heaven, Grand Ledge. <laughs> but um, I, you asked about, like, uh, the the topics and the content and the work yeah. I think, and it's it's really interesting how one project kind of progresses into the next. Maybe I'm uh, researching a method that I was interested in, and um, well, I mean recently, and then I I see that it's been done 150 years ago, <laughs> and um, that has like this weird effect on me. Like, oh man, there's nothing new under the sun. But mm -hmm. on the other hand. These are people who have been doing this in their long past, but the work that they made way back then is influencing me now, which I think is magical. And it does kind of renew my spirits a little bit and, and put some um, wind in my sails. And I think, you know, maybe some of the things I'm working on now are, you know, being seen by other people. Who knows how long it'll be relevant. But um, there's a lot of, uh, it's kind of enchanting to think about that sort of thing and, and really nice once in a while when somebody, you know, like yourself, which is, a great big honor who says, you know, I saw this, and I liked it. Boy, that's great. Um, so many people kind of work on things that they don't get to share. Sure. But the secret, Jennifer, is that I can't shut up about it. I love <laughs> making maps, but I really love talking about making maps. That's the best part I've found. Um, I make maps now just so I can talk about them. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> and awesome. it's rewarding to show people the process, show yeah. people the inputs and the result, and kind sure. of just give them the recipe and say, take it in whatever direction you want. But here's what I did. Yeah. And it's really gratifying. And I think it just kind of works quickly because of that. I just have so much fun working on it that it doesn't, doesn't feel a whole lot like work. But don't tell anybody that. Speaking of, I was, I, you know, I actually wondered what I, I, I'm calling you Esri's John Nelson on the promotional materials for this show, but I don't know what your position is. It, it's got to be whatever it is. It's the coolest job I think on earth. But what, what is it? I agree, Jennifer. I love it. It's so fun. I work <laughs> on the content team here at the Esri. Content so team. I got there it. is so much data flying all over the place, and a lot yeah. of it's flying out of Esri, and people yeah. are contributing data into Esri. And it's, it's part of my role is to see what data is available and to play with it and to um, kick it around, twist it and turn it in interesting ways and then show how I did it. And more fun, talk about why I did it and what it means to me and what it could mean to other people. Um, and yeah, so specifically I work on the content team's Living Atlas. So Living Atlas is a little bit like Wikipedia for maps and data. There's, just loads of um, living, breathing layers that are in their atmospheric stuff, oce oceanographic things, um, social science content coming in all the time, you know, measures about this and that. And it's just this enormous, you know, glowing hive of fun data. And I get to uh, just goof around in it and show that it exists and promote the fact that it's here waiting for people to use, but also, uh, a place where people can share their data if they want to help um, get it out there. It is a cool job, though, Jennifer. I love it. It's it's a it's a really cool job. Um, that's interesting. You're on the contents team within the Living Atlas uh, team on that. That's interesting. I didn't didn't know that. Mm -hmm. but thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I guess I, I have too many questions, so I'm, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I'm, 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 uh, I, I've got to limit myself here, but I'm wondering <laughs> where do you get the inspiration for most of your ideas? Is it, is it through social media or is it through, uh, is it through, you know, just sort of, is you're reading news articles, you're, you think, oh, that'd be an interesting angle to explore, you know, using, using GIS. Yes, yeah. all of it. All of, all it. of those things. <laughs> okay, cool. um, it, it is, it's almost random, but like I said, it's like this chain of ideas and one idea inspires the next. Mm -hmm. So the more productive I am, I found the more productive I am. <laughs> sure. And eventually, you know, over time, that'll kind of ebb and flow and I'll have this little sine wave of, of creative energy. But when I make a map or an application, um, so many what ifs come out of that, that it's, it's like, uh, you know, rolling the dice, you know, I've made a map and then it, it, it lands and kind of rolls out there and people have feedback about it. And I think, oh, that's actually a pretty interesting idea. Maybe I should try that. And I'll look for some data to apply that to, or I'll see some really just great data that's begging to be visualized and I'll try to visualize it. Or maybe I'll have a question about something. And th really what I'm trying to do is blow the dust off something like an archeologist would do and look for structure and data that exists. And I think that the structure is already there. And data is just the evidence you know, that builds up the sediment that builds up all around us all the time. And it's up to us, it's up to map people and, and visualization folks in general to uh, kind of take the uh, shovel at first and then the brush and then you know, you're kind of blowing the dust back to reveal what's, what's sitting there all along to help it tell its story. Um, but yeah, it, one project leads to the other a lot of the time. And sometimes people will have an idea or a suggestion, which I love. Interesting. Well, um, mm. I guess my, my final question to you um, is one that I typically uh, I'm ending off all of my, uh, my, my episodes um, broadcasts sure. with, um, which is, um, which is, I know all of us, whether um, geographically or metaphorically in our life or in our career, get, do tend to get lost. Um, so I, I wondered if you had an experience uh, that you could share in, ter in terms of a, of a time, uh, you know, whether it's concrete or, you know, metaphorical, uh, that you could share where, where you were lost and, uh, and how you, you did or, or didn't uh, find your way back. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one. And it happens so much and, and yeah. people who just show their work and the highlight reel that is social media, mm -hmm. they don't get the sense for the low times and the, mm -hmm. the dry spots or when somebody's in a rut, yeah. but it definitely happens. Um, I've, I've got, so two examples come to mind, Jennifer. One of them is uh, like a work related sense of dissatisfaction. And the other one is a, a personal crisis. And I can tell you about either one. You choose whatever, whatever you'd want to share. I, I mean, your your work, your your life. It's you know, you're one of my my foremost GIS heroes. So really, whatever you want to share, I I I'm I'm happy. I'm happy hearing either. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna try to get through this. Okay. I might need a second to breathe. Yeah. No. Breathe sorry. Off. I'm I'm like Bear really. <laughs> no. 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 It's great, and I don't mind talking about it. I really like talking about it if I can get through it. Um. So my parents are both geographers and I grew up in a very geography kind of family. My dad was a, a geography professor and my mom was actually my middle school geography and art teacher, which wow, is kind of cool. That is really yeah, cool. I had a, yeah. Oh, just a blast. Yeah. Great family. Um, and my mom had cancer many years ago and you know, you, you feel helpless. You can't do anything. Uh, there's, absolutely you know little i can do to have any sort of healing effect of course which is what you really want and so sure. i thought well how can i comfort them and this wasn't like an active thought but i did find myself in the weekdays furiously making maps doing uh, geographic visualizations um, something to bring back to them on the weekend when i would go visit every weekend i'd drive up there every weekend and spend time with with them helping them whatever i could do of course sure. but um yeah I, I found myself mapping and making furiously in those months you know, they're dark months mm -hmm. um but it was full of making on the weekdays and the hope of just bringing in a little bit of light and distraction maybe some levity 
um, to that situation. I don't know if I was successful, but the the uh, mm-hmm. the rut and the slowdown happened after she passed away. I felt like I was all used up, and that's all I had in me, you know. And um, you've, I had no volition. I, I had ideas, but I was like, eh, I'm just gonna do my you know regular day job stuff. And there's always day job things to fill up your time. Mm-hmm. Um, but my my creative urgency was just evaporated and and mind I think fully um, and that happened that that went on for a couple months you know I thought maybe I just won't do this sort of thing again and you know maybe I'll do what I'm supposed to do instead of what I want to do which is the balance that I take with every day every you know step of my day is like do I do what I want to do or do I do what I can be asked to do yeah. but I got a request that came in um, to make a map and I thought oh this is a really important thing and I thought it was um, worth following up on. And I really reluctantly got back into it. I, I made this thing, I um, collaborated a bit with this person and I created something and I made something and I got it out the door. And um, it kind of broke the seal on um, my m- mapper's block mm-hmm. that I had at the time. And it made f- making feel right again made it feel good to make something. Um, and it had been a while. So that's one example, Jennifer, I hope I didn't get too weird no, or personal with not everybody. At all, not, <laughs> not at all, not at all. I, thank no. you for sharing, yeah. yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I appreciate you sharing that. And I, uh, I look forward to, to following all of your, your content, your, your, your prolific content on, uh, on, on all of your platforms, your many, many platforms. And uh, I Thanks appreciate- Thanks for asking. It. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, well, thank you for, for for being on the program and uh, I will uh, I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Great. Well, it's been an honor. Thank you so much and thank you for listening.